Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Shawn Yasmin Binti Ramli from group Poly West Sendirian Berhad. Today, I will present about a summarization on the production of pain by R.C. Pentil that I refer from the website of uh, Yana Zulkifli uh, as mentioned in the slide. So, next is, this is the contents of uh, this presentation which I will present <coughs> uh, briefly explain on process flow, reaction and mechanism and also the environmental and safety concern. So let's uh, look at the process overview of this pain production. So in this pain production, there are three processes include uh, to obtain the, the product of pains. Uh, so the first one is crude oil fractionation. Uh, the second one is oxidation process and the last process is the esterification process. This is uh, the process flow diagram for the crude oil fractionation. So as you can see here, the crude oil that enters the atmospheric topping unit which is uh, the crude oil will be fractionated into uh, the product at different temperatures. So at this point, uh, at temperatures of 350 degrees Celsius, the crude oil is heated and pumped into the column. The crude oil will evaporate and the vapor rises through the column. So the vapor from the crude oil flows to the top of the column and leaves it through a pipe. So when the temperature falls between uh, 175 degrees Celsius and 325 degrees Celsius, some of the vapor will condense into liquid kerosene. So next process, the liquid hydrocarbon fit naphtha is diluted with steam and then briefly heated in a steam cracking furnace. The temperature reaction uh, is around 850 degrees Celsius and like hydrocarbon fits such as ethane, LPG or light naphtha give product streams rich in the lighter alkenes including ethylene, propylene and butadiene. Next is the oxidation process. This is the process flow diagram uh, which show a two-stage oxidation process for propylene to acrylene to acrylic acid. So in the reactor, in the first reactor, propylene, steam and compressed air are mixed together and fed into reactor 1. The temperature reaction is around 320 degrees Celsius. So in this reactor, uh, the reaction of propylene with steam uh, will produce acrylene. So the acrylene produced fed into the second reactor which at temperature of 280 degrees Celsius. In this reactor, the reaction of acrylene will produce an acrylic acid and acetic acid. So next process, uh, the acetic acid and acrylic acid uh, will send to absorber for recovery and acid purification. The temperature takes place at 1700 degrees Celsius. Uh, about 99.9% of acrylic acid is produced as the bottom product. So the last one is the esterification process. Uh, this is the process flow diagram for the esterification process. Acrylic acid, alcohol and the catalyst, which is usually sulfonic acid, together with the recycled streams are fed to the ester reactor. The acrylate ester, excess alcohol and water of esterification are taken overhead from the distillation column. The wet alcohol distillate containing a low level of acrylate is recycled back to the esterification reactor. So the esters produce uh, in minimum purity of 99.5%. The, mono the monomethyl ether of hydroquinone is added as polymerization inhibitor and the esters are used in this form. It's usually used in most industrial polymerization. Next is about reaction and mechanism. So this is uh, basically the reaction take place in the oxidation process. As you can see here, the main, pro uh, the main reaction uh, involves the propylene. Uh, with oxygen to produce acrylene and water. So, further process uh, of acrylene with oxygen will produce the acrylic acid. So, in this reaction, there is side reaction where the acrylene and the remaining oxygen will produce uh, acetic acid and carbon dioxide. The last is about environmental and safety concern. Acrylic acid is uh, one of the product for this pain production. 
So there are several issues regarding to the expose of acrylic acid, which is uh, acrylic acid is one of the volatile organic compound that can contribute to the formation of photochemical smoke in the presence of other precursors. So in the atmosphere, uh, acrylic acid reacts with ozone to produce glyoxylic acid and formic acid that can cause acid rain. Acrylic acid has slight acute toxicity to aquatic life and high toxicity to birds. The chronic toxic in long-term effects may include shortened lifespan, reproductive problems, lower fertility and changes in appearance or behavior. So uh, the solution for these issues such as avoid products that release high levels of uh, VOCs, for example use low VOC paints, acid rain can damage exterior paint. So, uh, this damage can be minimized by careful selection of the polymers and pigments used in the formulation. After uh, painting, wash the rollers and dry it before disposal. And the most important stains that do not rinse latex paint into the gutter or storm drain because it can endanger stream habitat for a quarter mile downstream. So the last one for the latex paint, uh, there is also an issue where uh, the fumes released from the paint are made of VOCs which are gases like benzene, formaldehyde and toluene. So the exposure of latex paint to dew, high humidity or rain shortly after paint has dried, especially if there was inadequate surface preparation. Uh, for painting under hot and windy conditions that make water-based paints dry too fast can cause cracking. Failure to maintain a wet edge when applying paint. So to counter these issues, it is required to use low VOC latex paint formulas, remove blisters by scraping, then sanding the surface, uh, remove the loose or flaking paint, and also to maintain the wet edge when painting, it is required to apply paint to the unpainted area and then back to the just painted surface so that's all from me thank you